So I am, um, like Katie said, a PhD candidate at George Mason University, and I'm currently living here in Bosnia conducting my dissertation research, which really seeks to understand how Bosnian women make sense of participation in peace building and of their role in contributing to meaningful social change. Um, I'm convinced that Bosnian women have something really important to teach us about how women navigate periods of conflict and post-conflict, and that there's some lessons that we can learn from Bosnian women that might be useful to women in other conflict situations, like women in Syria or women in the DR Congo. And I think that the place that um, is maybe under-investigated is in the daily actions that women do um, in a grassroots way within their families and their communities that really hold, hold families together and, and bring communities forward after periods of, of conflict. And that those actions are what really create the foundation from which we can begin to, to move towards positive peace. So the goal of my own research is to elevate the wisdom of Bosnian women into the public sphere and to really see um, how we can use and understand Bosnian women's experiences in a way that allows us to create better international policy and better interventions um, that seek to be helpful to women in post-conflict settings. Um, and also, I hope that my project really is an opportunity to present a more complex representation of women's contributions um, with, within their communities, but also to the, to the country as a whole in recovering from conflict. Um, I've been here now a couple of months, and I've had the opportunity to talk to a lot of incredible women and to partner with some of the re other researchers in the room. Um, and I've been running some photo voice projects with women in different areas of Bosnia, which I would like to talk about today. So photo voice is a participatory action research method that involves giving cameras to your participants who then take uh, pictures around themes that are related to your research question. And then those photographs that individuals take are, are used as a platform for dialogue about their experiences, either in a one-on-one, -on -one, like individual interview sort of setting, and, but also in a focus group setting where there's the opportunity for intersubjective meaning making and for sharing experiences and celebrating um, strength and resilience and also having discussions about challenges. Uh, as a feminist researcher, I'm particularly attracted to this method because for participants who have often been the object of the researcher's gaze, I think this is a really wonderful way in which participants can literally direct the gaze outwards um, and have an opportunity to have ownership over the research process because individuals um, choose which photos they take and which aspects of their experience they frame. When we come back and have a discussion about those photographs, they really are setting the agenda of that discussion, both within an individual basis and in, in a focus group sort of setting. It also allows the aspects of individuals' experience that they deem most important and most salient uh, to come forth and really guide and inform our understanding of people's lived experiences. Um, I also, what I also really love about this method is that it challenges, I think, essentialized representations of women in conflict um, it, in my research. And I, I really appreciated what Zilka said yesterday and what Marie Berry touched on about these, these dichotomous framings that happen where someone is like a victim or a perpetrator or they're a victim or a survivor. And, and those kind of framings really erase the multiplicity and the diversity of people's experiences and the movement between those identities. And I think that um, you know, arts have a really wonderful role to play in adding some complexity back into our understanding of, of people's experiences, but also of their sense making in those experiences. Um, I, as Katie mentioned, I am with the Narrative Center at George Mason University. And so from a narrative perspective, photo voice promotes a process of reflection that really has the ability to move people away from just a recitation of their story, of the chronology of the story, towards um, a more reflective conversation about how they're making sense of those events. 
and the meaning that those events have in their life. Uh, I think that for people that have experienced trauma also, this could be a really wonderful tool for intervention. Um, what we know from the emerging literature on neurophysiology and art therapy is that experiences of trauma get encoded into our brain in regions that are literally disconnected from the region responsible for speech. And so, as some narrative scholars like Linger have said, experiences of violence ha have the, the ability to, to break the great narration. And that makes sense with the, sci the, the science literature that's coming out, um, which is also showing that artistic process can be a way for individuals to access those encoded experiences of trauma and then externalize them through an artistic medium um, from which they can then speak. Uh, this hasn't been the focus of my own work because I'm not a clinician and I'm not um, doing sort of therapeutic interventions but I think that it is something that could be really promising as a resource to help people articulate a richer narrative of their experience. Um, I would like to, am I okay on time? Yes. Okay. I would like to share uh, an example of, of that in one of our recent groups that we've done. There was a woman who was in Bosnia during the war and um, became wounded. There was a sh like a, a mortar shell that fell, and she it, it had come through her chest and out outside out her side of her body, and she had this scar left over from this traumatic event. And she told us uh, that she really doesn't look at the scar, like it's not something that she ever talks about. It's something that she keeps kind of covered, and that, but she decided within our photo voice workshop that that would be the thing that she would focus her photographs on. And so she took a bunch of images of this scar, and when we sat down to talk to her about her photographs, she said that she hadn't even looked at the images. It was the first time that she was looking at them. And when we asked her kind of about what the scar meant for her, she said that it was really symbolic of this time in her life that was extremely difficult for herself, for other, other family members, that was not, it was not a source of a good memory. And so it was really something that she never looked at. But when we asked her what the message behind the photograph would be that she would want to share with other people, she said, you know, in looking at this, I think this is also really symbolic of my strength, of my, my survival. And my message would be to other women to keep fighting, to, to keep moving forward and keep your head up and, and striving towards the future. And so I think that, you know, it wasn't that the scar no longer represented this traumatic event, but that there was also an articulation of something that was, in my interpretation, an empowering sort of symbolism of survival. Um, so I think just to finish, I'll say that photo voice is a wonderful tool for self-representation that allows for a process of reflection among individuals and among group members, but also invites people who, um, who also may be concerned with these issues into a different sort of conversation about them. One of the other components of a traditional photo voice project model would be that you would hold at the end of the project a public art exhibition or some kind of public presentation where you would invite community members, um, stakeholders, policy makers there to, uh, and the women would, or the participants would also be there who had produced the photographs um, to really engage with those experiences and to connect with, with how people are making sense of things, what's important to them, and to elevate the voices of, of people whose voices are often marginalized or silenced in some of the, the locations where these projects have taken place. So I think that uh, discourse is inherently political, and these essentialized representations of women as victims or as survivors, as grieving mothers and widows, um, are, are really problematic and something that we should be paying attention to. And interventions like photo voice that seek to add uh, more complexity, more richness, more diversity to um, people's experiences of, of trauma, but also their experiences of re resilience and strength, is, uh, is inherently a political act because it challenges those essentialized framings. And for that reason, I am a huge fan of photo voice. And I'll stop there. Thank you.